So whether you work as an individual, in a team, or have your own business, customer feedback is super important to what we do. And even more important is having a process that you can collect that data without it taking hours out of your day. And in this video, I'm going to be showing you how we can create a very simple process using Microsoft 365 with a combination of Microsoft Lists, Power Automate, and Microsoft Forms to give you a process where you can send a simple questionnaire or a survey out to one of your customers asking about the service that they've actually been provided with, which will then automatically copy it into an internal table using Microsoft Lists in your business and also allow simple reporting through dashboards by slicing and dicing the data and also providing an insights into your customer feedback and how you could also improve the way you work. So you're probably thinking, that's great, what's the catch? Well, actually, the process I'm going to show you today and the technologies are effectively all within most of the Microsoft 365 licenses, meaning you don't have to input that credit card to get this process up and running. And I'm going to talk you through each of those stages, both going from the actual Microsoft form, we're going to have a look at you once you've built out your survey, we're going to build that Power Automate integration live on the screen, and we're also going to see the data at the end and I'm going to show you how to slice and dice that data. So by the end of the video, you could actually create this process yourself and begin using it for your own live customers as well. And it won't take us that long to do either. So the first area we're going to be having a look at is all around Microsoft Lists. Microsoft Lists is actually built on top of SharePoint to provide a structured way that we can store data in the way it's actually stored as a table. So we're going to have a look at creating a few columns for our data set. In other words, what's the data we want to store inside of this table in that structured way, which aligns to what we're going to be collecting from our survey. So let's have a look in this section about how we're going to build that first Microsoft list table to begin storing the all important customer feedback data. So let's head into office.com, select the waffle and go into lists. Then we're going to create our customer feedback list. So we're going to go to new list and we have a few options to choose from. We're going to go over blank list because I'm going to actually define the schema or the data that I'd like to collect in this customer feedback list. Give it a name, a color for the icon and the icon itself. Now, importantly, we have to then define where it's going to be saved to. So if I select my list, it'll be stored in my own OneDrive for business location. But instead, I can select one of my SharePoint sites or groups such as global sales, meaning my sales team have access to this customer feedback list as well. So I'm going to go ahead and select create. Once we've done that, because we have a blank list, we don't get anything that's going to win us any design awards. We simply get a customer feedback list with a single title column. That's where most people get a little bit stuck now. What we're going to do though is firstly rename the title column to something a little bit more interesting and related to customer feedback. So I'm going to change the title here by renaming it to the actual customer name and click save. And that's actually a single line of text field which is absolutely fine for our customer name. We're then going to add further columns to our table of data here. So let's go and create a new multi-line text field, select next, and we can now give it a name. So let's go with the product or service purchased. We can also add a description and we can even add things like a default value as well. If we also select more options, we can also add further options here around rich text. So we can actually use pictures, tables and hyperlinks and also append changes to existing text as well. But I'm also going to add further columns here. Now let's select from a choice column. And when we do that, we again can begin defining the column of data. Let's define this column as the office where the customer was working with. And in the choice values, we can then over type the three default values into our locations where our office is. London, Paris and Munich. Now also in addition to this you can actually define colour schemes. So if you wanted to set different colours into your choice values just click on the little paint icon to the right of each choice and you can define the relevant colours that you would like to use. For example if I change Paris to blue, London to red and Munich to more of a green colour we can have, have those colour choices defined on our column. When we're all set scroll down to the bottom and just click on save to save our new column. We can also add a new date and time column where we can capture the feedback date, which is all important. So when someone fills in our Microsoft form, we're going to be able to have it to have our feedback date shown on this list. So we can add our feedback date, give it a description, and then we can also define whether it should include the time and also should we change the format. 
but I'm going to go ahead and click on save as I don't need a time of when this form was submitted showing on the list. I can also add a person or people column, meaning we can capture if someone needs to review this a little later after someone submits our Microsoft form, we can again define who that person is internally from our internal address book. So here I can include their profile pictures, allow multiple people to be selected and even require if it always requires completion. So once that's done, we've now got our person who's going to review this feedback being added to our list also. Now we're going to go ahead and then give it a test. So I'm going to add a new item into our feedback list just manually without integrating our Microsoft form at this point. And here I can just input the data to make sure all of the data types are working correct. All of the field choices are right from the choice columns and our, also our date columns, super important. And that person is reviewing our data. This is always recommended before you even begin integrating it with a Power Automate or in this process, a Microsoft Form and Power Automate process because we need to ensure the data looks correct and can be inputted correctly before you run any new integration. We can see from our quick test there, Contoso PLC is all looking good. So now we have our table of data, we need to be able to integrate it with forms. Microsoft Forms will of course become our collector. We're gonna send that survey link out to someone to fill in and return to us. But having that Power Automate workflow will mean we're gonna copy that response detail straight into lists, meaning no one needs to manually input that data or copy and paste it. And it will happen within seconds of someone actually filling in that survey. So in this part of the video, let's go and build that integration in Power Automate and I'll talk you through the whole process too. So as we're going to use Microsoft Forms as a method to collect our data, whether that's from an internal or external party, I've went ahead and created a very simple survey aligning the questions what we're capturing in Microsoft lists and also aligning the choice values I want to capture inside of my Microsoft lists being fully aligned to what I also have on my Microsoft form for our feedback survey. And of course, when you're ready, you can get your survey link, copy it and also get ready to test it a little later. But importantly, take a note now of the actual survey name in Microsoft Forms. So we're going to need that and begin to integrate it into Power Automate. So let's head into Power Automate and then select Create on the left hand side. This will now allow us to create a new Power Automate workflow that's going to work with Microsoft Forms and integrate with our list. When we do that, go to Build Your Own on the right hand side and then you can now choose a connector. Now we're interested on the first step here to select forms as our trigger point. So effectively, when something happens in forms, we want our workflow to be triggered. Specifically, when a new response is submitted, that's what we're gonna want here. So click next. On the next option, we're also gonna search for forms and select get response details because again, we're gonna need details of the response that's coming back from forms to begin integrating that data into Microsoft lists. Now on this screen, you'll see it's added these two points onto our form, but they're not connected. So we have to select our customer feedback survey name from the first. So when a new response is submitted on that survey, we then once again, select the same form name, but all importantly, select the response ID by clicking into that field and selecting response ID on the right hand side. Once you've done that, click on new step. And at which point we now have basically told Flow and Power Automate when a new response comes in, and we're gonna have that data inside of this workflow, we need to store it somewhere. So here you can search for SharePoint, or in this scenario, I've just searched for lists, but again, that'll provide all of those SharePoint actions that we can use in our Power Automate flow. Next SharePoint, and then you can head down, and we're gonna be looking for Create Item. This means it's gonna create an item inside of our Microsoft lists in the same way that we done earlier when we created our own brand new item by filling it in manually. When you select create item, you'll need to pick the site address where your Microsoft list has been stored. In my scenario today, it's under global sales and also select the list name that has that data we want to integrate and bring in. And that is our customer feedback list. Now you'll then see all of these columns that appear in your list. And by simply left clicking into them, you can then select on the right hand side, the actual response details you're getting from the Microsoft form. The difference is when you have a choice field, you have to enter a custom value on the drop down. But again, you just go and select the response on the right hand side to have that populated inside of SharePoint. So very simple, left click, find the relevant response on the right hand side to your question, which also has the question name. 
And again, for feedback date, that's a submission time about when that submission was made. When you're all done, click on save inside the Power Automate workflow and you'll then notice it gets annoyingly named on the right hand side a little strange. So not easy to get back to, to the when a new response is submitted, etc. You're going to left click into that and over type it to the customer feedback flow. It means in six months time, you'll know what this flow and Power Automate is doing in comparison to that random name. Now let's go ahead and give it a test. I'm going to open my customer feedback survey as a person that's now submitting that feedback via the collector link. And when I'm ready, I can hit start now and begin to fill in those questions. As we can see, filling in a survey nice and simply, both with the information for Northwind traders and those choice values, and the response was submitted. And within seconds, we then see Northwind traders has now appeared on our customer feedback list. So right down at the bottom there, that response has been copied through from that Power Automate workflow from someone very simply filling in our Microsoft form. So very straightforward there to build that workflow and any new responses you receive in that survey or that Microsoft form survey will be immediately copied into our global sales customer feedback list without any intervention from you or one of your team. Excellent at making great progress now. We've got our list, we've got our integration, but obviously you're gonna to need to be able to slice and dice and report on that data. And the good news is, much like Excel, there is a lot of capability inside a Microsoft list. We can slice and dice through data and also look at it in more of a visual way or even through a calendar view as well. So in this part of the video, I'm gonna be showing you how we can make more sense of our data. So now you've got this process working, so you can slice and dice the data and also meet specific requirements from your team or your manager to help all of this customer feedback data get used in the right way. So let's go take a look. So now we've integrated our Power Automate with our Microsoft list, we're also gonna now consider how we can slice and dice and report on the data that we're collecting. We can easily click into one of the column headings and select filter by to filter the data in a more specific way. It might be in this scenario, I work for the London office, so I wanna see all the feedback that's come through for our London office. I can also click save as on the drop down on the right and I can save this data view as a London feedback, meaning I can click onto that right hand side in our what we call list views and select between all items and London feedback. But not only that, we can even set alerts. So if we go to automate and in rules, we can then create a rule on our Microsoft list. Now there are a few we can choose from. There are four granted to us, but we can also select when a column changes, a value changes, a new item is created or an item is deleted. And it may be that when Alex has got some feedback added into this Microsoft list, he'll want to know about it. So I can simply add when any item is created, send an email to Alex. So he won't need to check in manually An email will be delivered every time a new piece of feedback comes in. But likewise, maybe someone else needs to be notified when the feedback was pretty poor. So what we can do is when a column value changes, we can simply have it emailing the director of the company to let them that the service was pretty poor. So the service ranking in this scenario is gonna be equal to when it's poor and send an email again to the person that potentially is reviewing it, created by etc. or even me. As he mentioned, we're gonna be sending it to, to Nestor, who's a director of the company. So Nestor is aware that when the service isn't too good, he can take action with it as well. So two simple ways there we can create an alert to notify people both when feedback's received or when things have gone a little bit wrong in our feedback. But it doesn't end there in how we can also slice and dice data. We can also create a new view. And within that, we can also select an option here for a board view. That means that our data is much more visual in how my colleagues and me can see the data. I'm gonna call it feedback by office and organize this new board view by the office name and then select the button to create this new view. And it's also made public so everyone else can see it in the team. And there we go, in our board view, rather than that kind of view of our old data being very much Excel driven, we now see a very visual board view. They're all grouped by the office name and we can simply click into each of these items inside of each office in a very visual way. Not only that, on the right hand side under this new board view, you can also select customize card and you can use a new card designer to decide what will appear on the actual card itself. So maybe there's a few fields you don't need or a few fields that you do need. Very simple to change with no coding experience required. 
And everyone loves a good calendar view. So we can also create a brand new view and mark it as calendar and define the dates on which they also apply to the calendar. Now we only have one date in our feedback is actually feedback date. So I've selected it for both those, but I can also in another option define the customer name so I can appear as a title when we look at this new calendar view. We'll give it a name and we'll go ahead and click on create. And again, mark it as being visible as public. So me and the whole team can use this view looking forward. And there we go, a very simple view of our data now mapped onto a calendar with the title appearing. I can also then click into any one of these on our calendar. And much like we do in Outlook, we then see the underlying data alongside the feedback and the dates and so forth. So very simple to use and use a calendar view to get to all of your data inside the Microsoft list. Not forgetting your existing data can also be accessed back under the all items for quick access in a more traditional way. And that's it. We've now finished that whole process. I've taken you through creating a list, the Power Automate workflow to copy the data, and all importantly, how you can slice and dice the data. You now have the skills to go and create your own customer feedback process using Microsoft 365 and begin to improve the way you and your team work. We hope this video certainly helps. And also we would love it if you could subscribe to our channel so we can create more great content like this. And then also hit the like button as well. Not forgetting to check out our free Microsoft 365 ebook, which is linked in the comments below. So head to that link and you can download it for free, which has a huge amount of tips and tricks on Microsoft 365. Otherwise, we'll be seeing you in the next one.